This Wednesday, I woke up early for the third week in a row to visit another incredibly cool transit project, this time being built by Metrolinx, that will help transform North America's largest all-diesel regional railway into a modern high-frequency electric rapid transit system. The Davenport Diamond Grade Separation, as it's called, is an incredibly impressive rail flyover that removes one of the last major rail conflict points in Toronto, substantially improves the public realm and pedestrian and cycling access, and enables future high-frequency electric rail through this part of Toronto. A win for everyone and all modes. And I got to talk to some of the people helping to build it. So come along and take a look. Arriving at the project site, we started the day with a bunch of safety stuff, which was quite intense. This included a COVID screening, a site safety brief, and getting suited up in full body high vis, which was a first for me. We didn't waste any time after that and got out onto the site. This is where the first impressive element of this project lies. As you can see, the hourly bi-directional train service Metrolinx brought in a few years ago is still operating unencumbered, and this requires a lot of coordination and work. Site supervisors are talking to trains and rail traffic control to make sure people are clear roughly every half hour when a train travels through the area, and the track trains are currently running on was one of the first things built for the project, diverting traffic from the original alignment. I have to say it was also quite cold and I'm deeply impressed by anyone who braves this to work on a regular basis. At the same time, safety along the whole corridor has been improved, and old buildings, which were in many cases surrounded by bushes or years of material stacking up, even had fences built surrounding their back emergency exits. In case a fire just happens to happen just at the same time a GO train is traveling by. Now, we enter the site at Patton Road, which is the location of a formerly removed pedestrian underpass, or subway if you're British, which was small, dark, and dingy. A new underpass is being constructed at ground level, as trains will already be elevated at this point, and this will not only be much larger and safer than the old underpass, thanks to better sight lines, but it will also be accessible to all thanks to the lack of stairs. You can see one of the abutments for this is already really far along. Continuing past here, we get to the really interesting stuff. Now, both the southern section of the guideway and the section north of the CP Rail Corridor, which is the intersecting rail line this project helps remove the crossing with, learn more about that in my Toronto Secret Rail Line video, will be built on MSE, or Mechanically Stabilized Earth. This is basically a berm or embankment which is made very narrow by integrated retaining walls. But instead of running a large embankment-style wall through the whole area, with bridges at the major crossings, Metrolinx did something better and opted for a guideway for the central section. This isn't unlike those you'd see on a modern elevated rail line like the REM or the SkyTrain, but it's on a substantially larger scale to be able to carry massive GO trains. Part of the reason going elevated makes sense here is the low grades for freight and GO trains, and the naturally sloping landform here means that the overall project can be shorter and less disruptive than if the tracks had have gone underground. The starting point for the guideway are giant rebar forms, which turn into castings, which turn into giant smooth circular concrete pillars or piers. Now, since this is Canada, there's an intermediate step which is covering the concrete with giant blankets and pumping hot air in. This helps keep the temperature optimal so that the concrete cures properly, improving strength and longevity. You also might notice that the pillars grow larger as we travel north towards the crossing. That's because the crossing is the highest point on the guideway. Now, one thing that was definitely noticeable when walking along was just how wide the corridor actually is. It certainly feels wider than it looks on Google Maps or Street View or in pictures, and that's probably because a lot of the shrubbery and other material has been cleared for construction. What's fantastic is that in the central area, all of this space will be given back to the public, in the form of new public spaces and a greenway which will eventually connect to the West Toronto rail path. I talked about that in a previous video. And before you comment, will people really want to be hanging out near trains? Again, West Toronto Railpath. It's also worth noting that the guideway built on pillars has a much smaller footprint than a double track rail line, so the amount of space actually available for people to walk around here is substantially larger than you'd initially think, and larger than even if we just had have left the single track rail line. And at Campbell Park, the park will naturally flow into the greenway, significantly enlarging it. At DuPont Street, there's actually a bit of bridgeception, as DuPont passes under the original surface level rail line, and the new elevated guideway will pass over that older bridge, creating a cool, large, elevated open space over the street. Better yet, one of the sidewalks that previously went under the original rail bridge will instead ramp up here to connect to the new greenway. 
Now, as you can see in this section, the construction is very different from a simple embankment, and the project will actually use giant launching gantries, which you can see the bases and components for in various locations. These launching gantries will lift the giant concrete girders, which we actually got to see being delivered to the laydown yard and allow them to be joined together, tensioned with steel cables and glued one after another into a single giant girder that will span between each set of pillars. The large size of the girders that will be used to cross that location at DuPont Street, as well as the large sizes of the gantries, are just a few of the many complex portions of this project that need to be phased in order for sufficient space to be available to complete them. Something else cool that we saw at the rail yard was a microphone system that was being used to monitor project noise, so that in case people get extra excited while building the transit, things can be ramped down slightly to help keep the neighborhood peaceful. <laughs> Approaching the rail junction, we encountered yet another train, and the loud noise of it crossing the diamond made just another one of the benefits of this project clear, significant sound reduction. At this point, we could see the giant steel bridge, which has been constructed over the freight line, and the size is really gigantic and impressive. Since I know my viewers and others I've talked to have been asking, this bridge will accommodate up to three tracks for future freight traffic, which would be an additional track from what we have right now, with the limitation actually being the adjacent corridor space. All in all, the project is incredibly impressive, and now you'll get to see the short interview I conducted with one of the project leads, Kent Barber. So the first, the first thing is just a basic one. Can you explain the purpose of the grade separation and how it could potentially improve safety here at this crossing? Sure. The, uh, the grade separation, the, the primary purpose of the project is to separate the train traffic at this diamond location behind the, the CP trains and the GO trains. The, uh, today the, the freight traffic will impede the GO train service through this area causing GO trains to have to stop. And of course the presence of the Agri Crossing is a safety concern. It will also improve the safety at the Agri Crossing at Wallace, to the south of us, currently exists as the Golden Rail Agri Crossing, which will be separated from this project as well, allowing vehicles to pass under the guideway. So can you explain what the general phasing of the project is? Like what comes first, where, where are we now, and then what comes in the future? Uh, right now, we are uh, we're building the project in, in stages. The, the first stage of the project was to build a diversion track. Which is kind of right here, right? Yeah. Behind. That diversion track was pushed over as far as we could to the east side of the corridor to allow construction of the guideway. The guideway consists of MSC walls on the north and south ends and the bridge structure beginning at Wallace and extending all the way up here to CP back on MSC wall to the north as you can see, back down to Ray. Uh, once that, that elevated guideway is completed, we'll move train traffic up on top on the west track of the two-track structure. And then once that's completed, we can remove the diversion track, and that will make way for the future public rail project that will exist as a multi-use trail on the east side of the corridor, as well as public space underneath the guideway. What challenges are there working uh, at a major junction and next to these active rail lines? The most difficult part of the project is the proximity of the work to the actual active rail lines. As you can see, we have both the O track as well as the CP track. When there are trains in our block traveling north and south or east and west, we need to stop work in those areas and wait for the trains to pass. And there are a lot of detailed work plans that go into place to make sure that we have safety for all the workers out here. What other projects are happening in conjunction with this? So multi-use trail, etc., uh, the grade separations and all of that. There are other projects that are ongoing uh, to, the, to the north and south of us. There is a work, the grading work happening to support a second track to the north. Um, at the south limits of our project, there will be a future station being built at New Lansdowne that will come on board soon. Um, and as well, there is uh, uh, there are project, there are encore project that's going to be happening as well. That's that will start to start conditions in our contract to support that work. So for this project, will there be support for electrification built into the the guideway essentially? 
under this project, we'll be putting provisions in to support the ordinary catenary system, uh, including uh, grounding and bonding, including uh, conduit, uh, including the foundation supports for, for the catenary system, both on the elevated guideway portion as well as the MSC portions on either side. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, consider supporting the channel on YouTube memberships or Patreon, and I'll see you in the next one.